In the last assignment, we learned how to find different reactant orders. I want to spend more time with that in this video. I'm going to start with something called a zeroth order reactant. Zeroth order means that the concentration of the reactant doesn't actually affect the rate. We could say rate equals K times the concentration of a reactant. We'll just use a fictitious reactant A. And we're going to raise that to the zeroth power. Well, anything raised to the zeroth power is 1. So we're going to say that the rate is just equal to k. In other words, the rate is constant. I want to look at this rate, but I want to put it in terms of what's called an integrated rate law. An integrated rate law shows how the concentration of the reactant will change with time. It's called an integrated rate law because it's calculus. We said that rate is the change in concentration over time, or the first derivative of concentration with respect to time. And so if we integrate that over a range from the initial concentration to the final concentration, you'll get a new equation. For a zeroth order reaction, the integrated rate law looks like this. You can do the calculus on your own if you like, but here is the final answer. Now this equation is arranged in a special way. What it's telling us is that the concentration of A at any time is equal to the negative value of the rate constant times the time plus whatever your initial concentration was. That little concentration of A sub zero or A naught is telling you the initial concentration. For those of you that have taken physics, you're used to this notation. The equation is written this way because this is the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, where if you put concentration on your y-axis and time on your x-axis, your slope will be the negative value of your rate constant, and your y-intercept will be your initial concentration. I'm graphing concentration with respect to time, and my slope is the negative rate constant. This is the equation of a line. As we saw in our last assignment, the equations get more complicated. We can have a first order reactant, where rate equals k times the concentration of a raised to the first power. If I look at the integrated rate law for this, I get something very different. When expressed in the equation of a line, it looks like the natural log of the concentration of A equals negative KT plus the natural log of your initial concentration of A. So if I'm to graph this, I'm not going to graph concentration versus time. I'm going to graph the natural log of concentration versus time. And this is why. We looked at this example in the last assignment. The decomposition of nitrogen pentoxide does not happen at a constant rate. The rate of reaction changes over time. And for our pre-cal fans here, this is exponential decay. But if I graph it as the natural log of concentration over time, I now get the equation of a line. And this is much easier to work with. So from the equation of a line, I know that the negative value of the slope is going to be my rate constant. The y-intercept will be the natural log of my initial concentration. And if I want to find the concentration at any time, I can plug in time into my equation and I will get the natural log of that concentration. We also have second order reactions, where rate equals k times the concentration raised to the power of 2. We can do an integrated rate law for this, and you get a totally different equation. Here, if I set up my equation for a line, I'll get 1 over the concentration of A equals the positive value of my slope times time plus the inverse of my initial concentration. So to use this equation, I'm going to graph the inverse of concentration versus time. So for a second order reaction, you can graph the inverse of concentration on the y-axis and time on your x-axis, and you get this nice linear relationship. Here, the positive value of the slope gives you your rate constant. Your y-intercept is the inverse of your initial concentration, and if you want to find the concentration at any given time, you can plug time into your equation and you will get the inverse of your concentration. So this means that you're going to have to do a lot of graphing. In the assignment tonight, you'll be asked to generate some graphs, and then you'll also be asked to look at and interpret other graphs. You can look at the shape of the graph and figure out if it's first, second, or zero with order. What you're looking for is you're looking for a linear relationship. If it's linear when you graph concentration versus time, then you know it's zero with order, and you know that your slope is the negative of your k value, or your k value is the negative value of your slope. When you graph the natural log of concentration versus time, and you get a linear relationship, you now know that your reactant is first order. 
And from there, we know the slope is the negative value of your rate constant, or the rate constant is the negative value of your slope. And finally, if you graph the inverse of concentration versus time, and you find that you have a linear relationship, you now know that your reactant is second order. The slope here is equal to the positive value of k, or k is just equal to your slope, and your y-intercept is the inverse of your initial concentration.